So it's June, here in my tiny tropical styled garden. It's my own personal patch of paradise, and we have had an amazing spring and summer. Plenty of warm weather, with lots of rain showers, which make for happy, lush, healthy, tropical and exotic plants. So while the sun's shining, I'm going to give you a walk around and show you what's growing in my garden at this time of year. But before we go into detail about what plants are growing in my tropical style garden, let's just remember there has been a lot of change. And the majority of plants you can see are growing in pots, which means all of you, no matter how big or small a space you've got, you will be able to grow the tropical and exotic plants that you can see here. And in addition to that, I've added a greenhouse, which is where I grow a lot of the plants that I sell through the Grow Paradise shop. And just to give me extra room for these plants that are for sale, I've got a plant bench on the decking area just outside of the greenhouse where there's plants that are for sale as well as plants that I'm growing on as stock plants to take cuttings and seeds from. I have been waiting years for the trees in my garden to reach the height where they are above my head creating a canopy in that secluded tropical oasis feel. And this year is the year, finally, all of the trees are above my head and it's great. I really feel like I'm in my tropical styled garden rather than looking down on it. This absolutely beautiful golden leaved tree is my golden Indian bean tree. It's a catalpa and they are great, easy to grow, hardy trees. But the plant that makes the main part of the canopy of my tropical styled garden is this roost tree and it's fantastic. The coastal winds can rip through it and it still looks pristine. And its stems make a great place to support epiphytic plants, like these air plants. These are Tillandsia, and this one is sometimes known as Spanish moss, and it's just a great way to add that jungly vibe to your tropical style garden. The Albizia tree is finally waking up. Every single year I think I have killed this tree, but I need to learn to be more patient. So this is the view you get as you walk in the back gate of my tropical styled garden. And you'll notice that one of the first plants that catches your eye at this time of year is that rose. Now, I never thought I would be a man who would be telling you about roses, but this rose called Rodova fits into a tropical garden perfectly. The buds start off bright yellow and it opens into these intense orangey yellow blooms. And over time, the blooms fade through shades of pink. And for me, these are all colours that pick up on other tropical and exotic plants. So I think it just adds to that vibe and it gives some much needed early colour. And I think always experiment. You don't have to stick to guidelines. I say this over and over. Add the plants that you like and it will be your own style of tropical. Now, to add more colour is this Abutilon megabotanicum, which again is flowering in red and yellow. And I'm training this up the stem of that roost tree. And by growing things up the stems of other trees, you're making use of every planting opportunity and make sure you use every crack and crevice and vertical surface and your garden will feel really lush and tropical. So this bed is my semi-shady border. And again, it's a narrow border that goes along the garden path and everything you see is grown in pots, which is great. I can drop in a new plant as and when I buy them, like this bromeliad, which I bought from a rare plant fair. I've got begonias here because they like the morning sun and then shade uh, relief from that afternoon sun, like this begonia luxuriance, is that palm leaved begonia. Now, if you see any plants in this video and you want to know what they are, just comment below with the time code and I'll get back to you, letting you know what the plant is. It's always nice to find inspiration in other people's gardens. Now we're into the slightly more tropical area of my garden. Here I've got a puya sat inside this Balinese style pot. I can't remember the species of this one. And this leucodendron. This featured in my winter flowering plants and spring flowering plants video. I absolutely love it. This one's been a bit toasted um, and it's the first time growing them for me. And this is a salvia macrophylla and an unusual purple leaf form. I'm actually growing a few of these from seed as well. It's I just love it. I love it for this dark purple leaf. And 
you'll see this is becoming a bit of a trend in my tropical styled garden this year. I recently put a picture up on the Grow Paradise Instagram of this water bowl and all everybody asked about was what's that plant growing behind it? Well I can tell you, it's a stunner and it's Persicaria purple fantasy but it grows like mad so be careful where you plant it. Just below it is this really cool leaved hardy begonia, Begonia pedata feeder and this has been really popular in the Grow Paradise shop so I'll be propagating more of these. So we've got another purple leaved plant. This is my Aeonium. I love it. I love the reflection of it in the surface of the water. But behind that, I've got my Aroids, like this Colocasia, which is a Thai giant. And I grew this one from seed this spring. So you can imagine how big, hopefully, it's gonna be by the end of the year. It's got lovely, thick, fleshy leaves to it. And just beside that, I have another Colocasia. Um, I think this one's called Royal Hawaiian Aloha. And it's got a nice dark leaf, but it's the back of the leaf on this Colocasia that I really, really like. Those green veins stand out perfectly against the dark purple leaf, and it looks great when backlit by the sun like that. Colocasias are fantastic exotic plants for a tropical style garden. They are so easy to grow. Like this Colocasia um, Blue Hawaii. This one is really, really popular. I did grow it in my garden last year, and I managed to get a couple over winter. It's quite small leaves on this one at the moment, but it will hopefully grow away. You might also spot another common feature in my foliage plants in my tropical styled garden this year, and that's palmate leaves. I love it. I think they look super tropical and I'm just drawn to them. And this year I've added this Rubus lineatus, which has these amazing if what somewhat slightly suspicious looking leaves, but they are deeply corrugated leaves and they've got a lovely silvery white underside. This is a plant I love and I'm gonna try and propagate it and add some to the shop. I do have some seedlings that have just come up and hopefully I can grow those on. Just beside that is my Schefflera, Schefflera Taiwaniana. I know everybody has been going crazy for Schefflera's this year. Um, this has become a bit of a staple and a lot of people are growing it and you can see it's putting out that new flush of leaves like Schefflerers do. But be warned, they only do one new flush of leaves a year and if yours get nibbled, like mine have, those leaves, those leaves are going to look absolutely rubbish for the rest of the year. So do your best to protect them from any nasties that are going to be nibbling your plants. And another plant along this theme is Fatsia polycarpa, and this is a cultivar called Green Fingers. And it's got these really deeply lobed palmate leaves, and this is evergreen and hardy, so it looks great and lush in a tropical styled garden all year round. Now, this has just caught my eye. This is Roldana cristobalensis, and wait for it, guess what colour the bottom of the leaf is? Yeah, you got it, purple. <laughs> Look how rich that purple is. Again, I love the starry shaped leaves and I've grown the regular Roldana, the green one, in my garden before and I've got it again this year, but this purple form just caught my eye so it had to be added. I'm also growing a papaya this year, again, grown from seed. I sold a few through the shop. Um, this will have palmate leaves, but it's quite a young plant at the moment, so it's still got these weird contorted leaves, but hopefully this will be a nice plant as it matures through the season. If you're a subscriber, you'll know that I absolutely love Impatiens. And this Impatiens tinctoria has finally got some flower buds on it, so keep your eyes peeled for an update with this. And my good old staple, Impatiens oricoma cross bicordata, which is a vigorous hybrid from Madagascar, which has these stunning bright orange flowers that poke out above the foliage so you can enjoy them really easily. And they've got a yellow throat with orangey red speckles. For me, this is a great plant and I use it as a bedding plant every single year. The first flush of flowers on my variegated Brugmansia Maya have started to fade, but there are new buds on the way. I've absolutely fallen in love with Brugmansia and the fragrance, the size of the flowers. So keep your eyes peeled because I have gone nuts on new plants this year. 
Talking of going nuts on new plants, I finally got one of my dream wish list plants. This is a Brassiopsis mitis, and look how cool these leaves are. It's like a snowflake with these weird, like a paper cut leaf. It is amazing, and it's got this bizarre prickly stem. They are supposed to be pretty hardy, but I'm keeping it in a pot. I'm gonna over love it and over protect it for now. Um, I might experiment with planting it out. We'll see. We'll see. So as I said earlier in the video, I've got this plant bench now at the back of the garden on that decking area where I keep plants that I'm going to sell or I'm growing to propagate. And it's here that I've got some of the early additions to my Brugmansia collection, as well as some Iachroma, which are relatives of Brugmansia, but they have much smaller trumpet-like flowers. Um, there's a couple in bloom here. This one is Iachroma cyanium, and it's got these, <laughs> you guessed it, deep purple flowers. And I've got one that was sold as Australis red, and it's got red blooms, but I think this might be Fusionoides. We'll see. And I've also got this pale blue white flowering form, which is starting to develop some seed heads. And interestingly, these three were all in flower at the same time, so they could have hybridized. And I've got this blue trumpet, um, which is an Iochroma that I've grown from seed and it's yet to flower. I love to perch on the end of this deck of an evening and the Brugmansia will just rain that sweet fragrance down on me. And I feel completely at peace and secluded in this relatively small tropical styled garden. And it's because of that canopy and all of this lush foliage, even though there are houses all around me, it just feels secluded and calm. And I love to look up now and see how my patience has paid off. This roost tree was grown from a cutting and yes, they do grow quite quickly when they're young. Um, but man, what a difference it makes just having that foliage overhead. Hopefully by the end of the summer, all of my Brugmansias will be up there as well. And that Albizia will finally be in full leaf. And I bet you're wondering what happened to the half of the garden that I gave up for the dog. Well, I'm pleased to say that my wife has completely transformed it and she has a great eye for colors and she loves cottagey gardens. So we've got a lot of plants again, growing in containers and in this raised bed. And my mind has been opened. It's refreshing to look at plants that aren't tropical plants when that's what you do all day. So I really, really appreciate wandering around this side of the garden, smelling the roses, looking at the delicate flowers of this cottagey style garden. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Don't just focus on one style of planting. There's a lot to be learned from every style of planting and all walks of life. Just if you can, perhaps I'll encourage you to have a corner or a spot or even one pot in your garden where you grow plants that aren't tropical. But of course, I can't deny it, tropical and exotic plants and tropical style gardens are my absolute favorite. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe you found some inspiration in the plants I'm growing. If you liked it, press that like button, hit subscribe if you don't already, and please comment below and ask me any questions you like. Thanks for watching.